All right. Well, welcome back to advisory. Uh, the, all the counselors are here with me today. We're going to talk about um, getting you ready to forecast for your next year, 10th grade. I hope you guys are um, looking forward to that. But first of all, let's kind of reflect on where, what's going on. Like, um, what is one thing that you have enjoyed most this year? And go ahead and type it in the chat so you can share it with everybody, um, with all your classmates. And what is one thing that's been kind of challenging? What's, the, what's one of the challenging things of your year so far? I know one of my, go ahead and uh, type that in the chat. I know one of my, one of the good things about this year is I actually haven't gotten sick that often, amazingly enough. Um, but a challenge is also I haven't gotten sick because I haven't been able to hang out with students and that's been quite challenging. Ninth grade year is typically challenging. And so the challenges that we usually see are time management and procrastination. You know, um, there's a lot more classes you have to attend to. There's a lot more uh, minutia, as we call it, like little things that you have to do. Of course, social media always gets in our way, and that's for us adults too, where we are trying to, um, uh, you know, keep up with what's going on in our in the social realm as well as our academic. The um, but what we, you know, now you guys haven't had to deal with so many emails before, and to watch them pile up must be very stressful, and you know, and that's a means of communication. So. We, uh, we have to attend to them a lot more than we used to. Falling behind in class, I know is a little bit different than what, you know, when you're in class and your te teacher can check in with you more on a personal level. And so it feels pretty different to be falling behind in class and our relationships are a little uh, challenging as well. So what are some ways that you have been dealing with these, some of these challenges? Go ahead and, um, you know, Throw things up in the chat. Some of the things I know that you've been doing is you've been exercising. Uh, been students are trying meditation. Maybe they're reading for fun, you know, doing reading uh, what they want to read rather than what they have to read. Skateboarding, yoga. What other kind of things have you guys been doing to, to manage some of the challenges that we have in this year? I hope you can share them in your chat and see uh, and get some ideas of, of, of new ways of um, dealing with challenges. All right, so today's agenda, we're gonna be talking about forecasting. We're gonna go over the uh, course guide basics, you know, and how to navigate the, the course guide. Uh, we're also gonna ask you to create a four-year graduation plan or a graduation planning guide. We're gonna be using this as a forecasting sheet. Um, and so uh, it's a little bit different, but it's really is still very important to start planning what your four years will look like. And then we're gonna go over next week's agenda. Okay, um, excuse me. The, uh, so the agenda, so anyway, um, one of the goals for today include having you fill out your, your fillable PDF, a form called a graduation planning guide and uploading it into school and also emailing it to me and to your parents. Okay, you'll need a few documents in order to complete this task. If you haven't already, please take a moment to go to your email and get a copy of your transcript. We're so excited that we were able to send you your personal transcript um, and the fillable PDF that, we, that I'm talking about, the graduation planning guide. Um, and you can also find uh, the PDF on your Canvas lesson, uh, but you won't find your personal transcript there. We are also going to go. We are also going to show you how cool the um, the course guide is, and how easy it is to use. How easy the online version is to use, um, and that's the uh, the link to the course guide. It's actually really easy. It's the it's the um, the district website um, link, but then slash course guide. You know, forecasting is uh, is. Um, is, is really important for a lot of different reasons, okay? So, um, you know, when the weatherman makes a forecast, what they have to do is they have to collect a bunch of data and make a, 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 you know, make a prediction of what's gonna happen. But in the same way, we've been asking you to collect data on yourself. 
Okay, you've learned about your character strengths. And last week during advisory, you wrote down an academic goal and your current future goal that you have for yourself. You can take this information and apply it to what classes you wanna take while in high school and kind of map out um, how to get to these classes. So forecasting uh, is a good time to be thinking about how your skills, your interests and your strengths can help can be improved for your future goals. All right, so, um, so what kind of career or work are you thinking about? Are you hoping to get into and what do you need to what do you need to do now to get to the job that you want? Um, of course, we're assuming that you, you do want a high school diploma. Um, you know, do you need to go to community college? Can you go to a four-year college to, to get what you want? Do you need, maybe you need a trade school or more technical um, schooling. The, uh, some students choose to go to an apprentice program, uh, maybe through the military and get your know, training there. You can also take a gap year and kind of figure out what you want to do because, you know, you got time. So when you're forecasting, you're hoping to make a prediction for your future. Um, forecasting is also helpful for the Ashland High School administration. So then we know what classes you are interested in taking, and then we can create the master schedule. Um, so right now, I want you to take, take a look at your, um, uh, your transcript and go to this section. It's the uh, up, up in the right hand side is the graduation requirements section. All right. And if you recall, it tells you what class, what, how many credits are required in each subject area. All right. And oops, sorry. It also tells you what you've completed and what credits you've earned and what you still have to earn um, in the deficient section. The classes you took last summer are listed in the left-hand side of the transcript and are given a subject area code so you know where the credits um, went for the graduation requirements. Um, it's so much nicer to look at your own transcript, right? When you're creating a graduation plan so you know exactly what you need to get and, uh, and how to get it. Okay, um, now take a look at uh, how these sections, you know, your um, what you've taken this year and the, the graduation requirements section work together and notice how many elective credits do you still need and how many PE credits do you still need. You can find this, the graduation requirements also in the course guide and at this time I'm going to give it over to Diane. All right. Good morning, uh, ninth graders. My name is Diane Berry, and I work with students whose last names begin with A through HA, 10th through 12th grade. So I will be working with, oh, probably about 80 of you next year. All right, so we're focusing on the course catalog right now. And what we really wanna emphasize is that getting to know the courses offered at Ashland High School and navigating this guide is really important. So we're gonna take a few minutes to go over it. When we do meet with you, when we're on campus, we usually bring this big old stack of papers um, and then we have students take them home and then we have the students bring them back and sign them and then we put them in binders and we have a record of everything. Well, obviously we can't do that this year. So we are working with everything in the digital format. And the good news is our course guide has been modified and improved to meet those needs. Um, we want you to go to your Go to the website. You do have the link. It should have been in an email. So we'd love you to go to that website now um, and take a look at it. So if we go to page two, we're going to see the table of contents. And the table of contents spans over about three, four pages, two to five. Um, and this is really, really, really important to read through. As you can see here on the left, you're going to get a lot of basic information about um, kind of what your minimum and maximum class loads, your graduation requirements, what early college credit options are, and much, much more. Um, so if 
your course, if you're wanting to look at your course descriptions, um, oh, you know, let's look at how the table of contents is organized. Um, one of the things that you're gonna notice is that each, each department is listed alphabetically. And within those departments, the classes are listed alphabetically. So that's just really important when you're scanning through the table of contents to notice that. Sometimes we think that classes are listed from you know, ninth grade to 12th grade, but that's not the case in terms of the course guide. It's all alphabetical. Okay, a new feature that we have um, that we're gonna take advantage of this year is that we can click on each class in the table of contents and it will immediately take us to the course description further on in the catalog. Um, so we don't have to scroll through pages and pages to find the class we're looking at. We can actually just click on the, cl the class and move right to it. Then if you look up onto the far right corner of the, of the table of contents here, you're gonna see a, a little tab said that that's called return to table of contents. When you're reading your class description, go ahead and click this when you're all done and you'll return right back to the table of contents. This way you can kind of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as you research different classes that you're interested in taking or you just wanna know a little bit more about. Okay. So if we go to um, digital photography, this is an example class. Um, I wanna kind of show you how to read through what each of these descriptors means. So first of all, we have the name of the class, digital photography, all right? Then we move down to the way that it's listed in PowerSchool, digital photo. So that's the way it would show up on your, your PowerSchool schedule. Next, we have a weird, abbreviation NCES, which stands for National Education Statistics Codes, which is just a common national um, kind of language for describing classes that fit certain criteria. Then, as you can see, we see the length. Uh, and length indicates either semester or full year. So this is mostly something that you should pay attention to when you're picking out an elective, because um, electives are either going to be semester long or year long. The next word we have there is prerequisite, and prerequisite means that there is a class that's required to take before the class that you're looking at. So the prerequisite for digital photography is digital media, one. And finally, there's a studio fee. Some of our classes, our art classes, our culinary classes, our shop classes do have an additional fee. If you do receive a free and reduced lunch, that fee is waived. So even if you don't eat lunch in our cafeteria, but you qualify for free and reduced lunch, it's really, really smart to go ahead and fill out the paperwork. Remember this paperwork is 100% confidential. You can pick up uh, the form in the counseling office, or there's a digital one on our website. And then you qualify for fee waivers for all sorts of um, all sorts of things throughout the year at the high school. All right, your final arrow there shows the description of the course, which obviously is the most important piece of this slide when you're deciding what class you want, might wanna take. All right, moving on. So this slide is gonna describe um, courses called early college credit courses. Sometimes we refer to these courses as dual credits, which means two. Um, these are classes where you, that, that you can receive both high school credit and college credit for them. So you're getting two credits in one. We really recommend that you go ahead and read through these and think about those post-secondary plans, those after high school plans that you have and think, gosh, is one of these classes or two or three something that I think kind of matches some of my, my career interests. 
Maybe I want to think about becoming a graphic designer. Maybe I want to think about going into culinary school. Maybe I want to open a mechanic shop. Maybe I want to learn a little bit more about biology and become a wildlife biologist and take AP biology. The great thing about taking these classes is that you are already moving toward your degree in college by completing them. Um, if you do sign up for one of these classes or two of these classes, make sure in the fall that you check in with your counselor because they can, they can help you understand how to make sure you get that credit because you do need to sign up through the college that sponsors that. And that's either Rogue Community or Klamath Community or SOU. Okay, next slide. All right, so, um, what we want you to do when you think about um, forecasting your classes is we really do want you to think about your strengths, your interests, your aspirations, and choose classes thoughtfully. Um, we don't want you just to fill your schedule. As a sophomore, you have a little bit more room for electives. So we want you to personalize those electives. We want you to pick electives that you feel really speak to you, really interest you as you begin to explore um, where you might be directed after high school. Um, so next, I want to introduce you to Maurice. Hi everyone, Maurice Montero, counselor for letters O through Z. So if your last name falls between those letters, I am your counselor next year. Nice to meet everyone. So what we're gonna do now is ask you to make an academic plan for the rest of your time at Ashland High School. We often call this a four-year plan or a graduation plan. Please look at your fillable PDF, graduation planning guide, and your transcript. We're also gonna ask you to look up the elective classes you hope to take and see if there are prerequisites that you need to take first. This will help with planning for junior and senior year. So here's a copy of the top of the fillable graduation planning guide and it shows the ninth and 10th grade year. Please note that for your ninth grade year, many of your classes were chosen for you, but you can enter the electives you, look, you took last semester and which ones you're taking this semester. You can name the PE class you took or it can be a different elective. And there's a space to indicate if you took world language, language and which world language did you take. You may also notice that there are seven spaces and some of you took seven classes, but if you didn't, that's okay. Just leave it blank. If you did not pass a required class, you'll need to make room for it next year or the year after. You can make a note in the space provided if needed. 10th grade year also has an English and social science block class but it's American Studies or Advanced Placement or AP US History with English 10. In the space provided, please indicate if you hope to take AP US or American Studies next year. AP US is a college level class and the only AP class offered to 10th graders. Because it's a block class, similar to your English and Global Studies classes now, the teacher can cover the advanced material on a daily basis and prepare you to take the test in May. It makes it a little easier to digest all the material. Mr. Hord is having an information meeting, or who are, is having an information meeting today at 12, and the link is in your Canvas lesson. Your math and science teachers will be making recommendations of which classes they think you're ready to take next year. So please reach out to them if you're not sure. One important class consideration for you is if you didn't receive a B in um, integrated math one for both semesters, you will not meet the prerequisite to take chemistry next year. Go ahead and start filling this in this document with the classes you plan to take next year. This is your forecasting sheet or course selection sheet we need from you. I'm gonna introduce Brianna next. It's all yours. Thank you, Maurice. Um, yeah, so I'm Brianna Trevino, or Brie, and I work with students' last names H, E through N. So if you fall in that alphabet, I will be your counselor next year, and I'm super excited to meet you. Um, all right, so we want to highlight um, a few elective choices for next year. 
Um, okay, so we are hoping to offer a yoga and mindfulness class. Some of you may have taken um, technical drafting this year, and now there is a computer-aided manufacturing lab class to continue that study, so that's pretty cool. Um, some of the classes that um, you hope to take this year are coming back next year, um, since we're hoping to be back in school normally, um, like culinary art or intro to manufacturing. So that's something to look forward to. You may have seen this last year, um, but let's watch this great video about um, CTE or career and technical education classes that we offer here at Ashland High School. CTE is the best part of the school day. Learn and apply new skills in project-based classrooms. Become passionate about something at school. Career and technical education is probably the most valuable thing we can impart on the high school level. It's a creative outlet for energy that you have and where you can learn really useful skills that you use your whole life as a hobby or even a career. Okay, I hope you are well on your way to planning for next year. And we wanna talk with you um, a little bit about balance when planning for next year. And what we mean by that is making sure that you have time for all of the important activities in your life. So right now, obviously with COVID, um, you know, we're spending a lot of time in our, in our homes and um, next year we're, you know, hopefully going to be able to um, incorporate some of the things that we really love and that are important to us. Um, so we want to make sure that we know how to balance um, those important activities along with being successful in our classes. So think things to think about, will I have a job next year? Do I plan to play a sport or maybe multiple sports? Will I have time to exercise? Um, when will I have time to hang out and you know spend time with my family and friends? How much sleep do I need? Do I plan to be in a club? Do I plan to audition for a play? So all of these things are super important to think about when you're planning um, what your schedule is going to look like next year. All right, so just a summary of today's assignments. Um, so filling out your grad planning guide, um, you're going to use this as a guide when you complete your forecasting form or course selection next week. So this will be next Wednesday during advisory. You'll wanna save this um, 
as you can save it as whatever you want to save it as, um, but just make sure to add today's date. So March 10th, 2021. You're going to download it to your desktop and you can upload it into your score under the My Drive. Um, this is something that we walked through um, last week. And um, let's see what else. Um, okay, and then you're going to email a copy to your parent or guardian and then also make sure to um, send a copy or CC Carrie um, Phipps on that email your counselor so that she has a copy of that as well. It's really important also to talk with your parent and guardian about your plan. Um, you know, you can bounce ideas off of each other um, and they're a really important support during this time to help you sort of navigate um, what your plans are for the future. And then you can also, now that you know how to use the course guide, you can um, teach them how to use that as well. And then come prepared to make your course selections next week. All right, so if you need more help with your class selection, um, you have a couple different options. So the first would be consulting with your counselor, Carrie, um, asking a parent or guardian for help, reviewing the course guide. Um, I know that this is a lot of information, so um, that course guide is going to be really, really helpful. And then um, talking with your peers and your friends to see you know, if they've taken a class that they recommend, um, things like that. So a couple different options there. All right, so um, this is just a little timeline. So today, um, that AP US History Information session is taking place um, at 12 o'clock noon with Mr. Heward. And the Zoom link is provided on this um, on this PowerPoint. And today, Carrie will also be available to answer any questions that you have um, via her Zoom link. So, um, you know, use this opportunity to connect with her if you have any questions. March 15th, um, we're going to be hosting a family forecasting information night at 5.30. Um, and there will be a Zoom link sent out for that. So if your parent or guardian has any questions or if you wanna come um, and just, you know, get more information, then that's a great time to do so. And March 17th, we, or you will be completing your forecasting form during advisory. So this is a super exciting time. Um, again, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. And um, hopefully this presentation was helpful in um, making those next steps. All right, have a great day.